so it's time now to talk with a comedian, a very famous one. Joe Gatto is making his way to Mayo Civic Center in April of next year, and tickets are on sale now. And we are so lucky he's joining us now here. How are you doing, Joe? I'm great, Cammy. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us. You are uh, a, a treat to have on our show today. <laughs> uh, well, good. So I'm glad. I'm glad to be here, and I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> yeah, you will not. So we are so excited to have you coming to the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester next year on yes. your comedy tour. So how have things been going for you? I know you've had a change of pace a little bit here the last year. How's it been going? Yeah, it's been uh, good. We're getting uh, we're getting back back to what's from bad to okay to good. <laughs> so we're working our way back to great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we look forward to you coming to our city. Have you ever been to Rochester before? No, I haven't been to Rochester yet. I've heard um, I've heard that the people of Rochester are, are, love to laugh, so I'm going to make sure I bring plenty of plenty of laughter, and I guarantee three to five laughs during the show. <laughs> oh, okay, three to five. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get way more than that. And many people here, um, I've chatted with folks saying, "Oh, we get to interview Joe Gatto today," and they they just love you on Impractical Jokers, oh, that's great. and now. And now you have a podcast too on the side. Yeah, yeah, I do a, a, a podcast called Two Cool Moms with uh, comedian Steve Byrne, where we uh, both had mothers who gave great maternal uh, advice. <laughs> they had mater great maternal instincts, and we think we inherited that. So we, you know, tell stories about our childhood. And in the second half, we help fans. They submit questions and queries and dilemmas, and we help them as best we can. It's so fun. It's yeah. so fun. And the comedy tour. Why did you decide you were going to go and? do some stand-up throughout the country. Yeah, well, I, I always, you know, I always loved performing live. I always loved to make people laugh. That's what I love to do. And um, I just, you know, needed a vehicle to do that. And, uh, you know, I had I looked at my skill set and I had been up and been able to perform live and it was the easiest way to get back to it. I was like, well, I could try this out. So I started stand-up in uh, January of 2022 and uh, just really enjoyed it and worked on my hour. And now I have a really fun show that uh, has been so great to come out and, you know, share with everybody and get together and laugh, especially in these times when we need them. So it's been really great. Well, we look forward to you coming to Rochester for sure. So yeah. let's chat a little bit about Impractical Jokers. Of course, sure. that is where people know you from the most. Yeah, what was it like for you and your buddies for that show to really blow up like it did? Did you expect oh, that? <laughs> no, no way. Unbelievable. We were happy to get episode two. <laughs> Let alone, you know, I did that for a decade of my life and it was uh, what, what a crazy ride. And, and, you know, just to be with your friends and be able to take that, uh, you know, go on that journey together was just such an amazing, amazing piece of, you know, people dream of that, right? To get to work with your friends, make, make them laugh and get paid to do it. Like that's literally what we were doing. So it's it was so great. And that people enjoyed it so much it was really great to be able to affect people's lives and, you know, give them something to, you know, laugh at. And uh, it was really great. And even today, I mean, that show is on all the time. All I'm the sure time. You, yeah, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> it's always on at my house. And I think we first started watching it uh, during NCAA basketball. Mm -hmm. It was on True TV. And then we kept seeing the Impractical Jokers commercial. Mm -hmm. And okay, let's check this out. We we're hooked. For, there you go. That's how they get you. Come. That's how they get you. They get you in the basketball <laughs> fandom. Next thing you know, you're like, oh, I like to laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So do you have, you've probably been asked this question a few times. Do you have a favorite moment from the show that really sticks out in your mind or a couple favorites yeah I have I mean I have so so many I mean I'm I such a huge part of my life and such a great vehicle but I mean I'm the things that I hear from people are some of my favorite moments too so I love what that links up you know I loved being the genie I thought that was great when I uh they dressed me up as a genie to basically use my body as a human wrecking ball <laughs> and I got lifted in the air and I had to knock over all the sets of this local play that was playing um and that was really fun and one of the most fun things I had ever done which is great and uh of course whenever anybody serves mashed potatoes they yell scoopski patatas and throw <laughs> mashed potatoes around i mean i've done that to the world and i'm happy to do it <laughs> or when i hear larry yeah. right yeah, yeah. Uh, i know a poor guy's named larry oh. <laughs> i would have to say for me i'm a huge baseball fan and when you were on the set of MLB Network that was hilarious and Carlos Pena was a little bit annoyed he's like who is this guy what's going on here why does he keep doing push-ups for no reason oh my I could barely do 10 push-ups I had to do 100 was insane but they were great sports and it was when it was over they were like oh. and then to have Sal's dad come out was really fun too to oh my goodness show. Yeah. yeah Mark DeRosa was there just kind of like I don't know what's going on but I'm just gonna <laughs> laugh this off yeah <laughs> oh that was so fun so yeah. um anything that our our fans here in Rochester should know for April of next year. 
Yeah. I mean, um, you know, like I said, you guys got to know me from the television show. It's really fun to be up there by myself for an hour and get to know me even more. I, you know, I share stories of the boys, of course, in my life and my time on Jokers, but then I get into, you know, parenting, uh, you know, about my kids uh, and, and things there. And then also just about basically how to mess with people and what I've learned and how to live the best life, best uncomfortable life you can. It's kind of like a Ted talk. So <laughs> it works out really good. And it's just a great hour to come out and, and you know, just laugh. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to do it. I love when the fans come out, I get to meet them and talk to them a bunch too. So I love, uh, you know, to be in front of people and get to hear their stories and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there in Minnesota. Did you get to do a little bit of this when you guys, cause you guys went out on tour, but it just kind of was a mess with COVID. I think some got canceled. We had tickets, I think, in Sioux yeah. Falls, South Dakota, and it got canceled. Because yeah, of yeah, we had, you know, a big tour got uh, knocked down before that. So, yeah, you know, we had, I had toured for, you know, seven or eight years before that. We had started touring back in, you know, 2014, I think sure. it was 15 or whatnot. So, you know, we had done a bunch of it then. But, you know, then too, you know, you're part of the group. So, you know, you don't, when you're, when you're by yourself, you get to like, you know, write your own destiny when you're out there and what you spend your time with, who you're going to talk to and, you know, get to do meet and greets and things like that. So it's a, uh, it's a little different experience in that, in that regard. Sure. Well, that'll be a lot of fun to see yeah. you in your own element by yourself there on the stage. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if it's not funny, it's my fault. I can't blame anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so do you check in with the guys still All often? Time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because people always say, are you, oh, you guys still friends? Yeah, we were friends before the TV show and right. after. We just don't work together anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, but I literally went to dinner with uh, Murr two nights ago, you know, uh, and talked with Q yesterday. Yeah, you know, we're we're still best friends. Good. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, oh, they must not be buddies anymore. Well, people have lives outside, I know. <laughs> you know, their friends and work and things yeah. like that. So good to see that you guys are all still hanging in there. And uh, I can't get rid of them at this point. I mean, yeah, it's over 30 I think, years. <laughs> I don't think ever. I don't think ever. That's right. Well, Joe, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, tickets are still available in the Rochester area, and it's April 23rd. I think we're the last stop on I your tour. You, uh, yeah, you're the last one we announced right now, actually. You're the last one in April. We take a little bit of a break there. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that'll be good. It'll I'm going to finish big. <laughs> <laughs> to see you in Rochester, home of Mayo Clinic. You I will notice it. that right away when you stop Absolutely. by Rochester. I know you got it. It's going to be all over the place, right? That's what, <laughs> that's what you're known for. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, Joe, you have a good rest of your day. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you. All right, we do have to take a commercial break, so we'll be right back.